Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. You know how it goes. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holes barred. However, that is where the familiar ends and the adventure begins. Libras is teaching us Chinese and begins with a demonstration of his own. He's saying, you never know when, you just might need it. Chuka suddenly isn't speaking in another tongue. In fact, he says, forget the charade that, that is decency. Chuka, really? Aisha Yesufu is back. Yes, the bring back our girls, Aisha. She's breaking it down with some broken English and is saying, die not die. Ekene is also speaking on death, a little morbid, you might think. She's saying we only get one shot at it, so make it count. I, on the other hand, am quickening things up by saying, get off your backside, you armchair critics. It's time for action, right after the break. There's an Igbo proverb that says, whenever you wake up, it's your morning. So I say, good morning to you. Time is now. My advocacy today is a call to action for our armchair critics not satisfied with the level of governance to participate. A country of wise men that refuses to play politics will ultimately be ruled by fools. The recent expose of the rotten NDDC saddled with the responsibility of providing quality living conditions for the people of the Niger Delta as a result of their contribution to our commonwealth through all exploration in the region leaves a sour taste in the mouth of anyone who cares for this country. This is one agency, I wonder, what would come out of an audit of revenue generating agencies like NNPC, Customs Service, or even FIRS. Miscreants now constitute a significant block of our voting population, and very soon, thugs would start vying for and holding elective positions at all levels of governance. This is because of the failure of our social contract in ensuring inclusiveness in the distribution and benefits of our collective wealth. In a democracy, our rulers are older versions of the popular kids in school. The only difference is that politicians are champions in the Olympic of popularity contest. They are painfully weak on substance, but have an amazing ability to make people like them. And if they must choose between being right and being popular, they do not think twice. They are Olympians. Their overriding priority is winning. Participating in governance does not necessarily mean holding or contesting for elective position, but rather be a part of the movement, creating awareness and empowering the voting population with information and knowledge with about expectations from individuals seeking elective positions. This should be continuous process and not necessarily before election. The time is now. I will close with a quote from my brother-in-law that says, whenever you decide not to get involved, other people less prepared will do that on your behalf in a way that affects your daily life and you may not like the results. Let me kick off by saying, um, you know, essentially what we're all well, a lot of us are desirous of is to see collective, synchronized, even if it's opposition to what's in power. I, I, I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no point everybody, everybody's an expert at criticizing. Absolutely. But it's very hard to get uh, the kind of proactive r remedy. Even, even our program, a lot of times people critique the advocates and say, oh, we're just here doing a talk shop, that we're not preferring solutions, even though we do. They feel that there isn't enough practical, like now, okay, let's take your advocacy. And you're saying, you should be able to do something more than just critique. But someone will say, okay, what do you want me to do? They want you to spell it out. What do you want me to do? Because a lot of people are overwhelmed. Even when the recent Revolution Now protests I saw, 
I looked at, I saw lots of billboards up there. There were several things. I saw something on housing. I saw something on unemployment. I saw something on, on, on those their billboards that they had printed out. I saw something on even the health sector. It's, it, it's distracting. Everyone seems to want to make a name for themselves. So who is going to now collaborate with the existing body? Like maybe you say you want to get behind Sarah, or you want to get behind Teach for Nigeria. So I agree with you that the Commonwealth hasn't been inclusive enough. And the few of us that are there I don't necessarily see the link between those that do not have and the state we're in. So we need to do more. Maybe for me, the priority would be the education sector. Teach for Nigeria, for example, I love what they're doing. I would get behind them. Why must we each go and set up our own NGO? Why can't we get behind? That's my own contribution to the conversation. Yeah, I think that's a useful one. Uh, I have a problem with when, you, when you're supporting someone else. I have a, it's, it's, it's sad, but I have a kind of um, distrust okay. of Nigerians in politics or activism, as if there's always an agenda. And for that reason, I don't want to Sign up. join up with anybody. Yes, which is which is a very difficult problem for me. Yeah, I'm because stating we need, my own to, we need to do problem. something about that. I, I don't know, you know, I, I feel that way, and so it's very difficult. So but you I, understand why we need to collaborate. We need to, yeah, we need to collaborate, yes. Yes, I mean directly assuming that, that I'm, or rather it means that from the way I've just spoken, I mean directly saying that I'm a good person, right? Mm. For me to say, yes. I don't trust anybody Everyone else. else. Yes. Aha. So where, where, how, how do we, where do we get go from beyond, here? how do we get over that? Yeah. Uh, um, for me, uh, really, what we are doing is participation. Mm. Yeah. But everyone yeah. can be on the advocate. Yeah, no. What so I'm what saying, are you saying, saying they should do? This is, this is, that's what people don't know. This is massive We're education. Yeah, but what massive. should the masses then do? Wait, okay, okay, let me be patient. I'll share some things. Mm. This is massive education and awareness. Mm, because sometimes, some people feel that some of the things that, you know, people do in government are real. They are, they are, that's the way it ought to be anyway. Okay. Until you come and say, no, this is not it and it shouldn't be like that. And then you find out that also, at every turn, these people reach out to you to say, oh, the governor just did this. Is it right or wrong? Mm. In their own little sphere, they go out to reach other people. Mm. It's, it, it is a, a country where illiteracy level is so high. You first and foremost need to create that education to create awareness, especially with the kind of poverty that you have. After we talked about protests, you know you can't sustain a protest in Nigeria for one week, except, except you have taken care of hunger. I, and you know, so the first thing should be find a way to educate people. There are people who ordinarily never wanted to be involved in politics, who from hearing from other people now feel, you know what, I just can't sit down like this. I must do something. Not all of us can be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we will be shouting hallelujah. So that's why some of us will consistently be on this side to educate and create awareness. And then you'll be shocked that a lot of people, look at the number of people that participated in the last election, you know, in terms of campaigns. Mm. If they had told you that people like Banky W would come out before to say, I want to be he part of impact. it, yeah. you wouldn't he believe. Impact, yes. But he came out. Mm. And then secondly, it is not left for us to say, you know what, Banky, you failed because you didn't start early. If you start early, we'll back you. you would go more. Absolutely. And which is what you are doing now. Yeah. If you sit down there and assume that everybody would just know that this is what they can this is do, what they can do yeah, you'll be right. missing it. Okay, because those people who are dealing with us, you know, are not resting. They are also educating their people. Okay. You know, there's a saying that the excuses are like shoes. And you always find the one that fits. So when we don't want to do something, we will do everything to, to, to make excuses and not do it. And, and in, in doing making those excuses, we will justify the reason why we are not doing it so that we feel good about ourselves. And I think that's where uh, most Nigerians are. Saido has said a lot of things. He has put so much together in this. But I'm just going to take some of them, you know, just one by one as quickly as I, as, as I can. First of all, I think every Nigerian should know that nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you a voice. Every one of us, we have voices. Even those who, are, unfortunately, biologically, they can't speak. Some of them can, they have sign languages. They can, they can make their impact known. So we find out that a lot of Nigerians sit back at home and they are expecting activists to do work for them. 
There is nothing. I, I, for me personally, I don't do labor. If you go to my Twitter handle, you see what I say. I am me. I don't do labor. This is exactly one of the reasons. Even right from as a child, I refuse to do labor. Because what happened with labor is that they try to box you in one place and, oh, you are the activist. Why are you not talking? When all of us not get mouths, we know Sabi talk. I mean, the thing where they, where they, where they, the problem where we get for, the, for our country, you know, they affect anybody. I will come to make them, those demands. Not be everybody to enjoy it. So the issue of waiting for activists to come and do something, and that's why some over time we continuously hear people say that what is their agenda? Oh, don't mind them. They are looking mm, for contract. They are looking contract. for, for appointment. Stop. It is time for us to stop. Every one of us must be an active citizen. And normally, when they say, how do I introduce? I said, for me, I'm an active citizen. I see something that is wrong, I'm going to talk about it. And I think that's why every Nigerian, what we should begin to do. Let's not wait and think, oh, there are certain critics that should criticize. Why the rest of us are having fun, we are enjoying our life. Some people should put their lives on the line and be the ones to be calling out. And then we'll be the ones to come, they will pay the price, and the rest of us will enjoy it. That's we'll not say, the way we'll it's going to be. We want to do that. Aisha. Agenda. Aisha. Want, let me, don't, don't, let me we'll come bring it to your own advocacy, because our time is up on this segment. Okay, you asked a very oh, important oh, okay. question, and that what can we do? I would say one thing. If all Nigerians would adopt one person, education is very key. Yeah. If you would adopt yeah. one so person and empower that person with knowledge, yeah. fund that person's school, that whole family, that generation has been lifted from poverty. Yeah. You remember what I talked about, the thugs? They are moving those people because they lack the skills. Yeah. We need to empower them, give them education. Education, education, that's what my advocacy would be. Well, I've delivered my advocacy in a language I hope we understand. After the break, Libros switches to speaking in tongues. Or is it Chinese, Libros? Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> Ni hao. Wun ta han chun hun wan cha. Wan han chun hun hun. Mai ta kun. Dwala, dwala. You see, I'm already perfecting my skills in Mandarin, also called Pontoboao. Because if care is not taken, we're soon going back to colonization. That Nigeria, D2 Africa, has turned to China for infrastructure alone is no longer news. And that China is gradually taking over the asset of loan defaulting country is also not news, as they have not only recently taken over international airport in Lusaka, Zambia, but some other prize assets in the country, like Zesco, the power company, for defaulting in her $8 billion loan from China. This happened barely after the Zambia state-owned media TV and radio station, ZNBC, were taken over by the Chinese, as they control 60% of the shares therein. Most of this Chinese loan, even though cheap in terms of interest rates, are usually very difficult to pay back, as the borrowed fund always finds its way back to China as capital flight, since most of the projects are executed by the Chinese to the extent of supplying even the laborers. That we have also waived our collective freedom, our sovereignty, to the Chinese over a $5.3 billion infrastructural loan as admitted by the Minister for Transportation, Chibike Amechi, is even more frightening even though he claimed not to know the existence of such a waiver clause in the agreement, yet he wants us to take the loan. Thunder, thunder, hope you they do press up. Holy God knows how many of such sovereignty waiver clauses are inserted in most of the other agreements with China and other countries. If there are such clauses, then we should be prepared and ready as a people in the event of any default on our part to forfeit some of these are supposed national infrastructures to the Chinese government. Some of these assets include, but not limited to the following. The Abuja, Lagos, Kano, and Portacot airport terminals being constructed by China's Civil Engineering Construction Corporation, CCECC, with a borrowed loan of $3.4 billion, jointly borrowed by Buhari and Good Luck Administration from the China Exim Bank for the rehabilitation of the airports. Abuja Urban Race System is another one, which is being constructed with a $500 million loan from China. The 180 kilometer Abuja Kaduna Rail System, which was also funded from the $1 billion Chinese loan from Jonathan and Buhari's administration, 
borrowed by both administrations at $500 million apiece. Lagos Ibadan Rail Line, being funded by a $1.6 billion loan secured from the China Exim Bank also, is one of such projects. The Lagos Kano Rail Line, which is ordinarily an extension of the Lagos Ibadan Line and will be constructed with a sum of $6.1 billion loan from China. The Zungeru Hydroelectric Power Project under construction by the China Electricity Electric Engineering Company, CEC, with a loan of $1.2 billion also from China. The fiber cable for internet infrastructure constructed with a loan of $328 million from the Export Import Bank of China. Variously newly constructed rail lines, road rehabilitation, comb water supply project constructed with a $1 billion loan from China. All of these I have listed will be collectively taken over if we default. Even though the government has promised to pay back the loan as at when due, can this loan be paid from the 1,000 one naira train ticket on these trains or from the sales of crude oil from the rich Niger Delta region that is not a beneficiary of any of this loan apart from the train through Port Harcourt? That would be one of the wonders of the world. Well, time will tell. I would therefore advocate that the National Assembly should not just review the clauses in most of this loan, but should cancel majority of the loans in their entirety, as recently done by Sierra Loon and Tanzania. The Serena president, Julius Madabio, he had to cancel a $400 million Chinese contract signed by his predecessor, Ernest Baokoroma, on the ground that some of clauses in the agreement were not favorable to Sierra Leone. The same thing with Magafoli of Tanzania. For if we plug the leakages in government, reduce the allowances of our public office holders and properly utilize recovered loot, we would not need to mortgage the future of our country, youth and generation on bond, all in the name of borrowing funds to fund infrastructure. Otherwise, you better start learning how to speak Mandarin, as we might soon be having Chun Zengping as central bank governor, or Wun Zhongzhan as FCT minister. A word said in half goes into the wise and becomes a whole. Zie zie, I like the job will say, abayo. Ah, you don't say wait thunder, don't do press up. Thunder, <laughs> don't they wait. Nanaja people never agree. That's just the way it is. We, we are waiting and we are not doing the needful because a lot of people are expecting, are, they are expecting to be part of the status quo part of the, the ones that are doing the looting, part of the ones that are, are giving churning out the bad governance. And so they're wait, ready to wait, wait the suffering until it comes their time. And that's part of the major problem we have. And liberals ask the question, how do we get the, these leaders that we have, how do we get them in? It's simple. The people are not ready to sacrifice. The people are not ready to vote their conscience. They, they just want to be part of the winning team. The Nigerians think election is like being a, a fan of a football club or something. So they always want to be with the winning team. Yeah. Even when the right candidate comes and they know this is the person who has the capacity, the character, the competence to be able to do the job, they would rather vote the ones that are in party, what they call structure, because they are expected that that person will win and they want the euphoria of being part of the winning team. And that's reason why we are here until we begin to look at candidates and vote each one on their own uh, individual capacity will continue to be in this club sadly yeah well i this thing what hits me is in multi layers the first one is a plethora of uh, bad contracts that uh, nigeria signed with some of these uh, countries and nobody has been held accountable yeah. mm. you know we have not seen any uh, body held, no arrest has been made for, you know, putting us through these terrible contracts. And then secondly, we hear all these billions and billions of dollars, and it has not translate, translated to, you know, empowering the average Nigerians. If you're building roads, at least you employ Nigerians. There are Nigerians that will be engaged, and you see a level of, you still find that the people that are building the roads are brought from China. So in the end, we spent all of this money. You've not empowered Nigerians to build the so-called infrastructure, right? The money still go, goes back to China. And the people that have tied us into those terrible contracts walk free amongst us. Yeah, let, me, I mean, let me take you from there, because I, and maybe just roping what Aisha said. You know, because she's saying that a lot of times we don't vote 
with our conscience, we're voting for people who will furnish our immediate short term, what we feel as a stomach infrastructure. But again, that brings me back to what you said at the end of the last advocacy. We need to enlighten people, because we're not going to accept that. The reason they're doing that is that maybe they feel that they're, in a way, they're being held hostage by poverty and desperation. But if you enlighten people and they have enough knowledge of how somehow that's their need and that person in power is robbing them, like Aisha even said once when she did an advocacy, or sometime in recent times, that if you're looting, then that person is directly destroying your own commonwealth. Okay. So that enlightenment has to be there so that people will now know that it's actually important to sacrifice today so that I can get the right person. But moving on and taking on from what you said, mm -hmm. when we saw the PNID saga, some of us were like, our mouths were hanging open. How did this happen? And yet, it's happening in front Again. of our eyes. Because there must be a penalty. And we have this is the kind of protest. Said, this is the kind of protest I'm ready to. <laughs> don't even bother. Don't no, look but at this is the kind of protest I'm ready to hang on to. To see that everybody, because there'll be a trail of people who look the other way, whilst this nonsense thing was being tabled and accepted and jeopardizing our future. So all of them, one by one, they need to, there needs to be a penalty attached. And then just to add this before I let uh, Chuka say, Mago Fuli from uh, Tanzania said he would not sign the contract because he said even a drunkard, that contract <laughs> that the Chinese that. brought in, yeah. will not sign this contract. So why are we behaving like people who our eyes are open and yes, we're behaving like worse than drunkards? You know, this has been going on since independence when we learned that um, the best way to get money and take it out of the country was to work with foreigners. It hasn't changed. It has only gotten worse and with new systems of ways of doing it. So it's, it's, I think like the advocate here always say, uh, we have to go back. Uh, there's, there's some kind of rewind that we need to do in Nigeria before we can, uh, we, you know, reassess ourselves. Um, well, from Mandarin to the other side of culture or cultural bankruptcy after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Show me what you invest in, and I'll show you what you value. So the absence of memory. A society like ours cares little for memory, but makes a song and dance about culture and tradition. So there must be a disconnect somewhere. Culture, in any case, is a dynamic construct, but an evolving one as well. So precedent is important as a line in any narrative. And this misunderstood fact explains why we care little for our past, but yet we believe we are better custodians and respecters of tradition and culture than others. We are wasteful with culture because we fail to revise it in line with contemporary thinking. We spend a fortune on traditional weddings, many times traversing the country to attend such events. We list endless requirements for this purpose, but yet the actual marriage is often neglected. We still foolishly believe that little gestures cannot evolve, and they have. It was not that many decades ago that it was an abomination to hand over objects with one's left hand. Well, where are we on that now? Has anyone died from using the left hand for the purpose? We jettisoned our local faith and religious practices for imported styles, so much so that we talk of Mecca, Israel, and other places far away. Where has that gotten us? We squander hard-earned money on pilgrimage. No wonder we are so poor. Even Boko Haram is a perfect example of inferiority complex and where it can lead to fighting at home for imported religion. If we were so cultural and respectful of tradition, why the looting of the nation's commonwealth? Why do we keep voting for scallywags or producing the scallywags in the first place? Now, we see, when tradition meets modernity, then a minister of government gets slapped by a female managing director that he ought to be supervising. And the chauvinistic reply from that same minister is she has had four husbands. The Minister for Humanitarian Affairs is so lackluster in appearance, speech, delivery, and performance, that one wonders if the president is aware that we are in a modern world 
in 2020, and only certain types should be cabinet ministers. Again, where in a modern society would serving and past senators, representatives, and governors receive contracts from government? The former governor of Delta is now said to have received over 100 contracts from NDDC. That's Uduagan. The truth is that, as a nation, we have no traditions today. We refer to them, but they are gone. We call them up when we think it will drive this African narrative, whereas industries like tourism and culture cannot thrive because we don't care. We don't care where an Adams or Shomole would exhibit the motopark tendency, but still dance and gyrate to music as thousands in Edo State turn out to rallies to see him. Where Bola Tinubu refers to himself as national leader of the ruling political party, and we are unable to cut him out of our serious affairs. So let's forget the charade that is decency. Nigeria is culturally bankrupt and needs to cleanse. And so instead of pursuing the complicated foreign agenda of gender definition and LB, LGBTQ and so on and such like, we need to get back to our roots, to a time when a name was more valuable than wealth. Liberos, do you want to jump in or should I? No, I can. I, um, okay. I think the advocacies today are like linked okay. in a way. Okay. Um, I see, you know, cause and effect. What we're seeing now is a result of bad governance. You know, this is what we're seeing. We're losing our value as a people, values as a people. We're losing our essence, the tradition, you know, because the driver has lost direction. We don't value that which makes us unique as Africans. I remember the days, you know, used to be proud of your culture, you're Nigerian, but now everybody wants to be Western. Hey, yo, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, you know? We've lost all of those things. And it's sad because we don't have the right leadership. We don't have the right people to direct us. And for so many other re reasons, poverty and all of those things that are not working. So it's interesting and, how and, all the advocates are tied. And that's why um, we would celebrate... Um, Big Brother Africa, mm -hmm. and then parades the nudity and the, the nonsense, um, and yet do not celebrate, you know, the, those that made first class in engineering, or those that made first class in um, in applied arts, or breakthrough in medicine. even the young ones that are excelling, doing even very the well. young people that are excelling, would rather showcase, you know stupidity or you rather see you know equate a lady with her looks than her brains and you know um we, the, the list is endless really but for me it still takes us back to education and then also i like what uh, my sister uh, your partner aisha said i was speaking in tongues you want to say <laughs> so said just now well, she will understand when you. people ask me that question um, oh, I wish the Ghanese of this world were alive uh, to lead us. I say, no, 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 no. We are the human rights advocates. I say, no, you are a human rights advocate. You are a civil society. You lead. What stop you from saying, you know what, walk into a law firm and said, I want to partner with you. I'll pay some of the fees for filing. You use your brain. Let us challenge this law. Mm, okay. And not tell me, Oh, if Ghani were alive, he would have been challenging it. You are alive. I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Let us yeah. partner. Bring your money. I might not have, I might want to challenge it, but I don't have the money. Okay. But you have the money. Okay. You, you partner, you challenge. Don't sit down there and think things will change. Else to do it. Okay, uh, let, me, let me just quickly say, mm -hmm. okay. I want to just say, nice uh, or did you want to, Aisha, let me quickly say this. And uh, I think to some extent, I understand where you're coming from, but I do feel that Generalizing doesn't quite drive the point home, because I would say a number of things you said there seem like generalization, to say we don't have any culture and all that. We do. Left. And to say mm. if someone chooses the culture, because you yourself admitted that culture itself is evolving, mm -hmm. so if someone adopts something, there it's, it's, so what is culture really? That's what I was thinking about when you were talking. Culture is that thing we have in common that, that, that reflects a shared value system. So what has interrupted our evolution as a people around the culture that we maybe were born into is probably capitalism. We, we got, because capitalism is a reward system. I hope I'm not getting too far out there. So if somewhere along the line, we've adopted a reward system that tells us that, oh, as long as you get the money, it doesn't matter how you get it. 
then we set aside the things that act like a good name. So now he brought up Big Brother. It's good he did because I was thinking about that as well. You, this is a reward system that we, our young people are looking at. Even my young, my 12-year-old daughter, has, her mates are watching. It's, they're telling them that if you want to be famous, if you want to be noticed overnight, you want to be a star, this is your ladder in a mm -hmm. country where there is no hope for you otherwise. Mm -hmm. And you see those people, they become stars overnight. So already mm -hmm. you're setting up a reward system where there isn't anything else that will tell them work hard and get this reward. So the reward system has broken down. And that is what is, we're generating by the things we do and the things we, the politicians we have as role models, that is a reward system that's constantly regenerating the wrong kind of people. Aisha, let me stop there. Mm. Uh, so talking about that reward system, let me take it up from there. We are a country where we punish uh, good behavior and reward bad behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, we, spoke, we just spoke about the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs. This is the same That's lady who so under her mm -hmm. in the month of Ramadan, dates were given, there be no dates were given to be given to IDP <laughs> on the IDP. She was head of the refugee, I uh, can't remember what the full name is right now. Saudi Arabia brought in dates, and those dates that were being given to IDPs were actually sold in the market. Nigeria had to apologize for that corruption. And yet, what, what happened? Sorry. Instead of her to face panels, of her to be punished, her agency had done something, or she was rewarded with uh, a ministerial appointment. Let me come to the issue of culture. I think in the fact is that we are very inferior in the, way, uh, in the way we take on our culture. We don't see our culture as important. We see more of other people. And the culture where we are very good at using it is when it comes to oppression and hypocrisy. <laughs> and I'm going to take the issue of the LGBTQ uh, 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 topic right now. I am, uh, I am 47 years old, and I grew up in Kano. I was 10 years old when I, when I started witnessing men getting married to men. And that was somehow in the early 80s. And even before then, they were doing it in Canada. Many people will be shocked about it. At that moment, the West were not tolerant of the LGBT, LGBTQ community, though there are other initiatives attached to it. Yes. They were cross they were homosexuals, they were girls. They did their own thing. Nobody bothered because you do your own thing. For us as kids, it was fun, you know, they were always so joyful and everything. They were mainly the ones, they called them and they'll do. The, uh, the, the women, to, the, the women who had their own, although the men were, were more accepted than the women, than the women who were, who were lesbians. So what am I saying? But as soon as the West made it, uh, made it uh, uh, legal for, for men to get married over there and all of that, all of a sudden we found in Nigeria, pa, 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 pa. no, you have to do it, you have to legalize it. Who cared before? Nobody did. They had their own life. They did what they wanted to do. They moved about freely uh, 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 across dressers and all of that. And for me, that is where that inferiority is all about. Today, for example, in Nigeria, polygamy is allowed, right? There are places where they do polyandry, some polygyny, whether women marry women, not in Nigeria, but in other African countries. But in the West, in the West, polygamy is not allowed. I think they call it bigamy or something like that. It's a crime over there. But just you know what? Wait until the West today legalize polygamy. You will not see mm. people that will not come and be telling you, Oh, we have to allow polygamy that a man can have more wives or a woman can have more, more husbands. Yeah. It is high time we begin to focus and uh, yeah. respect our culture, respect the way we do our things, and just evolve on that way. The inferiority that we have, we should do away with. I could say more of that, but not on this side. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have proffered our solutions. Now it's time to hear your thoughts and ideas. And um, so, on We Need More Fainters, please. That's the NDTC probe. George Adeinka C says, I must tell you that the youth that are waiting to steal are more than the current people stealing. All we need is persecution. If these guys are not being persecuted, then these probes and investigations would continue to be worthless. George, do you not mean prosecution? Donald Outlaw has a series of things to say on four seasons of corruption. Are we raising citizens or slaves? He says, I like the idea, love or fear. I am glad you all are having discussion. Even so, apart from the societal issues tackled, what about starting small controllable social experiments based on proposed economic models or do some tests? Can't bring change merely from only discussion, but also plans and implementation. Just suggestions from a YouTuber. I think a good way to start is what are your problems? I think corruption override can start small and with a collection of small decisions. Later, it is, put, it is to put people of good reputation into key roles. For example, in the justice system, law enforcement, foreign policy, education, etc. 
I presume the reason that Africa as a whole fails was because there was no unity. And if there was, it was only from those in power and complacency, but resentment from its citizens. Well, Donnell Outlaw, I like the fact that you are reasoning with us. It has to begin with ideas and discussions, and I'm sure you'd agree. So please, everyone, continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Plus TV Africa, hashtag again, the Advocate NG. To catch up with the previous broadcast, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash the Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Aisha is saying why continue to fear death when we are facing death every day. This is very heavy stuff. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. There is a time to face up to our fears and make a quality decision. So I'm saying, Dan, I die. Anytime where they hear Nigerian people, they talk, say they know who John Putin because they know one day, I just they laugh. Many of them never say a bad governor don't kill more people than people where don't die for protest. Stray bullets from police where don't kill Nigerians, where they mind their business, judge for their house, eh? He passed the one. We don't keep people waiting for protests. I've been no be so. Make a repeat with it, I don't talk before. Then I die. Now only one die we get. And any other way that die be, now so that die will be. We are a nation full of people who are afraid of dying and have allowed ourselves to merely survive rather than truly, truly live. For how long will we continue to cower in fear and watch our country continue to be destroyed and lives wasted? <laughs> We say we do not want to die, yet we are being killed like chicken. Today, the life of a cow is worth more than the Nigerian life. We have refused to stand up and dare death so we can truly live. We have allowed our slaves to be enslaved under the shadow of death. We are busy thanking God that we survived the latest attack. We forget that yesterday's victims were once survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors, and tomorrow's victims would be today's survivors. We've also forgotten that those who have been killed before will not be killed again. And the next to be killed are those of us who are alive. And I ask, who is next? The death we are afraid to face and protest and end to bad governance, we face that death in many deadly traps caused by that same bad governance that we don't want to go and protest. What do we think happens when money's meant to build hospitals and buy equipment for the hospitals are looted? Death. What do we think happens when money's meant to fix our roads are looted and cars get involved in accidents because those roads were not fixed? Death. What do we think happens when money's meant to fight the war against the soldiers are looted? <laughs> it's still death. Bad governance is killing us every day, and yet we are afraid of death and refuse to come out and protest against bad governance. <laughs> hey, what an irony. Breathing in oxygen and, bre and breathing out carbon dioxide. It's not what life living is not about. It's not the indication of one being alive. It is an indication that we are merely surviving, nothing else. When we keep quiet, in the face of injustice, because we are afraid to die, then we are truly dead. <laughs> uh, I mean, I yeah, uh, that's it. 
Waleshwenka said, mm. the man died in he who keeps silence in the face of tyranny. And then, um, um, also, um, I've forgotten the saying now, but I will remember. Uh, you find that, that, like I said before, you know, Fela said, you know, the reason my people said they fear too much, they fear for the things they not see, mm. they fear for the air around us, they no one die. Papa day for house, mama day for house, I get one child. These are things that have been said more than 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and it's still very to the yet we forget that we are all dying by installments, mm. you know, because for failure to take action. And then that's why people will tell you, what's the value of life here? Nothing. We hear it every day. You hear, oh, may so rest in peace. Just recently, a young boy from my community, Monday Miku, vibrant, felt sick, and then the next thing, he just died. And all we could say or do is, may so rest Sorry. in peace. Nobody will ask, when will these deaths of young ones stop? And so maybe people like that now, if you ask them, come out, let's go protest, you will say, ah, no, 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 no. Not knowing that death is just waiting by the corner. But if we had taken those steps collectively and decide that, look, enough is this enough, probably a lot of us that have died would be alive today. And so I always say this, if we all, the way we troop out to Canaan land, troop out to Nasfat, troop out to Holy Ghost Congress, and we all troop out like that and say, we'll just sit down here on the express and won't go anywhere until government takes a decision, we'll be able to avoid some of these deaths that we are witnessing okay, let today. Let me take it from there because I think it's easier said than done in the sense that clearly, otherwise we would have done it. But the other side of it <laughs> no, is, no, no, because I'm trying to, and let me, I'm not saying it because I want to pick holes. I'm saying it because I actually want a practical solution. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's not at that level yet. Yeah. When people say if we all troop out, the reason people troop out collectively for anything is because there's a consensus, there's an agreement. Even with Aisha's uh, advocacy, I feel the spirit behind it. But I say to myself, it may not go beyond people feeling fired up. Why is that? Because people need direction. Those of us who have clarity should step out and, and define what is it that will make someone leave their house and come and agree with you and stand there. For I'm coming. Let me, let me get to where I'm going. So for example, you look at, um, and, and before I used to critique this, so I, now I'm seeing it from a different perspective. Um, you take, um, what was this thing that they did? War against, um, people were going against um, the fuel subsidy. There was a united understanding. If anybody who stepped no, out no, then no. was doing again, no, let me finish. No, they were, no, let no. me finish or you will just interrupt my flow. So people were coming out because they understood what they were coming out for. Mm -hmm. Even when they did Revolution Now earlier on, I wanted to go out. But when it were, happened yesterday, or is it, I was confused because I looked at all the banners and I said, what is it that I'm going to identify with? So people want to revolt, they're un unhappy, but nobody is helping shape. Because going out and protesting without a goal is a pointless protest. Mm -hmm. We need to be more defined. So go and sit on yes. the road and say government must do what? Ikele, what will that Ikele. do? Ikele. Until you have a defined team, agenda, it will not Nigeria, get you anywhere. Everything. Bring Back Our Girls was defined. Everything, nothing else. Everything in Nigeria from everything. So let's not just working. speak for so you don't, sake. you don't pick education and so but we you want need to, to be pointed now. For education. So is it everything that let will me, suddenly let stop let because can, can I, can I, let, let, me, let me just join. Let me, let me quickly say this. Uh, in business, there's this uh, concept that we use say start, stop, and continue. From time to time, you evaluate what you're doing and see what you want to you know, stop doing, what you want to continue doing, or what you want to start doing. Now, the approach, and I hear you, Aisha, yeah, the approach in Nigeria here, we found that, look, the people were protesting, they don't value life. That approach is not working. Can we reevaluate and, you know, look another, now you could, you could now begin to sponsor people who would go there and show them how it's done. It, 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 that aggressive, Men might not, if it's not working, you change your strategy. Yeah, you keep get sponsored people who go. Protested. Wait now. You, 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 get, you, get, you, get, you have not protested. No, hold on, hold on. No, no, hold on. So, what you're doing now is you're now supporting like minded people who will go there and, you know, show them how it's done. Show them that this thing can be done rather than taking the aggressive stand because it is not working. I don't even the mind being aggressive if I could see what it is and, and being aggressive now? for. So for, for, for the uh, first time, I, what I want to say is that what do we mean by there should be an agenda? 
Is the suffering we are suffering not an agenda in itself? <laughs> that yeah, government is so happy that I'm we are not an agenda. Out and protect the, against. Said the suffering. And this bad governance, it, it comes in different ways. When Chibo guests were abducted, it was because of bad governance. A lot of things, educational system is not good. So hold your pack at whatever it no, is that like is you are passionate about. Aisha. Come out and be that and, and do no, that, Aisha. right? I think this is we're saying here. Yeah. When people no, are saying, oh, to what the way we are protecting the aggressive, when one well, is not talking. the aggressive, we've been sitting at home, we are dying. We've been sitting at home, bad governance keeps coming to us. The reason I don't, don't mind, I don't mind saying you, this is because... Hold on, let me tell you okay. the reason why Nigerians are not protesting. is because they have their fellow citizens that, we, that are paying stop gap for government. Exactly. Somebody is sick. They don't have money, they come and meet somebody that begs the person to give them when so what, why would the person demand for uh, a healthcare system when he can come to his fellow citizen and beg for money? Why would somebody demand for Actually, that could be a reason, system? but that can be the can reason in all circumstances. Pay. It can be the reason in all circumstances. It's a reason. Okay. But let me just okay. say okay. with the bring back okay. our girls, with the bring back okay. our girls. We are allowing government to abdicate their responsibilities. Okay. Why we are taxing people to, to do what that for let me give you an example. Yesterday somebody wanted to help you back. And I said, I but you know, guys, why do you have to this form of protest against the unemployment? I'm not saying let's be, let's be, deep, let's be pointed. I'm, I'm the, for you. I'm not even against you, I, but I'm saying okay, Chuka, let's be deliberate so and let's be, so you can, let's be organized you can, because. Yes. Frustration is something we share in common, but to just be frustrated and it is not protest against no, everything will not no, get us to the promised land. We need to be deliberate. Did you hear my Ekene, last Ekene, that's not it. So do we protest based on... Do we break down this protest? protest so that today, today, today we'll we protest, protest education about, no, yes, tomorrow, and tomorrow to be to... And, you know, and next tomorrow, we'll and, and groups for... will be made to form in that sort of. That, I would even rather that. Yeah. Let, let's pick a topic. So Let, let's say yeah. education. Let's focus on education and drive it through to its logical conclusion. Because yeah. to come out with several placards saying several See, things, Ekele, you won't know which one you're Ekele, targeting. Let me first tell you, I have been involved in so many protests. Protest is not. You don't. A lot of people. Everybody is feeling the society differently. Okay. And then collectively, bad governance leads to all of this. Mm -hmm. And advocacy is talking about if we sit down, afraid of death, to confront the the status quo, you will still die anyway. We know so that. Which we one agree is better? With that. We agree. And with so that. you are saying, oh look, no, uh, have organized. Just say today you want to talk about health, you want to protest about health, and then we will just take health. No, because the man who is also Suffering education will tell you anyway when you get to education, call me. For now, you people are facing exactly. your own problem. That's not the way it is no, done. No, we're all suffering. The, the way same thing. that's the word. All of us collectively. Let's find something are suffering. that we can buy. Into. And the only thread that is running across all of this, which was what Said started with, is bad governance. And so when you come out, what in, in um, 2012, when we came out to say uh, we want to occupy Lagos because we want good governance. But the problem we had then was that while Labour were discussing with the government, mm -hmm. nobody was discussing on our behalf. Okay, we have, we, have, we, have to leave it. we have to leave it okay. there. Okay, so Aisha says, there is a time to face up to our fears and essentially look death in the face. After the break, I'm looking at things from a slightly different perspective and saying there's a time to hold and a time to let go. Embarking on the journey once you've embraced the destination can make the experience that more satisfying. No second takes, that's what I'm talking about today. It's no secret that people often shy away from talking about death, even when it's staring us in the face. During this period, more than at any other time, I've been conscious of death amongst the living. Some due to COVID-19, some due to old age, others due to various causes. One thing that rings true of all these incidents is that there never seems to be an appropriate time to let go of our loved ones, but rather that letting go is foisted on us, ready or not, like it or not. You could say it's the most unrehearsed fixed appointment of all time, and there are no second takes. It would seem that the fear of the unknown might be one reason for our aversion to dwelling on this major life event that is common to us all. Indeed, someone recently observed that when confronted with accepting the absence of a loved one, that death has a finality to it that is, just strikes you dumb. I could go down the road of recommending spiritual exercises to prepare us for the afterlife, but that's not the focus of today's advocacy. 
I simply want to identify what I have observed to be the one thing that has made people's transition from this life easier on them and on their loved ones. I recently attended the virtual funeral of a beloved relative, and the tributes that attended the ceremony were mostly filled with a sense of celebrating a life lived on purpose, a life intentional in prioritizing human connections. So my takeaway from this, and therefore what I want to share at this time, is that we should be more deliberate about nurturing our connections with other human beings, as simple as that. Not so much our achievements, but the human connections we have the opportunity to make in the midst of our achievements. If we do this by way of a priority, then there'll be nothing to regret when the time comes for us to say bye-bye to this world, because in an open way, we would have enriched the lives of those around us by simply interacting with them. I would say that this is a good definition of fulfillment, wouldn't you? Um, uh, okay, you're talking about fulfillment. I wonder how you got um, to know that uh, the person who is gone has, uh, has other things to do. Uh, do does not have other things to do. Oh, okay. Or is fulfilled. And because I've never really seen anybody apart from maybe Musheshe, you know, who just lays down and said, "Oh, I'm fulfilled." <laughs> apart from maybe people who commit suicide, says, okay, I'm fulfilled. Lord, where are you now? I'm ready to, to go. You know, there's still a lot to do. You know, but for me, um, it's always, if you don't want to be forgotten as soon as you are dead, better do things worth writing or write things worth reading. You know, and so, your relationship with people, yeah, those people will remember, and then after some time, you know, it will f fade out and then it's all gone. But what you create in the world, the world will always, always remember. Mm. Um, Socrates, nobody knows Socrates' children, but we still discuss Socrates till date. You know, Thomas Edison, these are people, you don't even know who they are, whether they have male children, mm. female children, the material, but what they added to make the world a what better time. place for all of us. Once you see that thing, you always remember mm -hmm. it. And, and so, today, tomorrow, God forbid, but the time will always come because one good thing about this life is that none of us will live it alive. And then when somebody's talking about a kene, oh, oh, that lady that created the advocate. And then, Funny enough, I don't want to be remembered for that. No, I'm saying, <laughs> but unfortunately, unfortunately, these are the things that people can perceive yeah. in the scope, and that they will the remember. But, mm -hmm. you know, what you want is not people, what people would. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. in practical, what people, the names that people will remember. Right. You know, what you create, how did you make the world a better place? Yes. And so that's why for me, rounding up, that sometimes I look at our leaders and I laugh. All of this money, how many of us still remember Abakari? Exactly. All of this money, the only thing you'll be remembered for is, you know, the impact you made to humanity and how did you make life easy and better for people. That's all. Otherwise, if you like, how well you serve your God is your personal experience when you get there. I, I relate with uh, Ekene's advocacy entirely because, you know, each time I ask myself, you know, what my purpose is in life, it's a, it's a very deep question. When you constantly, you know, reflect on why am I here? What am I meant to do? You know, and how do I want to be remembered? when I'm no longer here. If we begin to ask ourselves those questions, then some of the pseudo or the things we, the mundane things we now uh, put so much emphasis would begin to look very natural. Oh, I have 200 houses, would not matter. But what would matter would be the people that you have been able to lift because that's the story that will be shared after. And so I relate completely. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of lessons that this thing is, is finite. There's a time when we'd leave and there'll be stories that will be shared or things that will be said about us. So what would our story be? It's important that we reflect mm. on that. And you see, the truth, you're all, you're all right, yes, as in we, we, we want to be remembered, and that's the best way. But don't you think that sometimes when, you, when there's nothing to remember you by, you then force something on people to remember you? I mean, case in point, the president right now is naming rail stations after certain Nigerians. That in itself is, is a joke because what he's trying to do is to make you remember people who you should actually forget. Okay. Uh, and, the, and I think that the irony of it also is that I can't imagine telling Seidu that, oh, meet me at uh, Saraki uh, <laughs> Rail Station because I don't even know what town we're talking about. If it's Agbo, Agbo Station, we know where Agbo is, <laughs> halfway between Benin and Asaba. 
but you go and name it. I think that's the Good Luck Jonathan one. Yes. So you say, meet me at Good Luck Jonathan Station. You know, just because you want us to remember certain people who may not be worth remembering. remembering. Mm. But it tells you that we do need to remember people. That's what it, what it shows, that even those who are not supposed to be remembered actually feel that they want to be remembered. Uh, okay, uh, for me, the thing here is, uh, is, is about, when we talk about living a fulfilled life, it's where are you right now? Have you, are you fulfilled with the life that you have? Do you have things on stage? And because for me, you know, this is, this is something, a topic that I talk about all the time with people. And I'm saying, why keep things in there and live a life of, of regret, of things you ought to have said? Every day for me, the way I consider every day in my own personal space is that every day is the last day. And for me, that is it. And so I'm going to say what I have to say today. I'm going to do what I'm going to do today. I'm going to live my life on a project journey. I'm going to be there. And for me, the most important thing is that it's not how much you have in your hand. It's how much you've been able, what difference you made in other people's lives. Things that you don't even think as anything, you've forgotten. But to somebody else, it's major. For me, that is all what it is about. And there are a lot of people, and it still comes back to all the things we've been saying today. People are thinking that they are afraid to die, they are doing the best. There are certain things they want to say. You can't just say, if not this day, I did care. If not, if I would have done this. That means you're not living a fulfilled life. You're not living true to yourself. For me, the thing about life is that be who you want to be. Do what you need to do. Don't be afraid of it. It will come anywhere where it will come. So why don't you do all that you can do right now and ensure that you, you get it? Don't be apologetic. It's not about what people will think. It's about your inner self. All of us, we have that. Uh, what, do I, what do I call this now? A, a compass that tells us when we're doing the right thing and when we're, not, when we're doing the wrong thing. Even when if the other people are seeing it or other people are not seeing it. At the end of the day, what impact? Because one day we're going to leave this earth, no matter how long we live. Nobody's going to be live up to 150 years. And then the world is still going on. 1,000 years from now, what would people say about you? Yeah, that yeah. Should, we should think about, rather than what people are saying about us now, which is what a lot of people focus on. Yeah, I mean, again, you. you know, part of the inspiration for me was, like I said, a loved one. And she was very deliberate about investing in people's lives. Now, yes, like Libra said, those are not people that, you know, the people who want to be remembered for things they did, they will be remembered in this world. But there's, there's something deeper than that for me anyway, and that's the human connection. And it made me reflect and say, yes, you're on the way to somewhere, but that human being who may never sing your praises, that is actually what counts. But unfortunately, that's not the thing we chronicle. But uh, hey, to whom, those that uh, are listening. It's time for us to respect the director's signal. He's telling us it's time to go. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to Plus TV Africa forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Till next time, same channel, let's keep advocating for a better society. One conversation, one action at a time. Five conversations. Bye bye. Bye. Five, five. One action at a time. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. While Labour were discussing with the government, mm. nobody was discussing on our behalf. Okay, we have, we, have, we, have to it, we have to leave it there. Okay. Yeah. And, and, uh, so, so, we're, we're, our time is up of this segment. Okay, let's hear. Yeah. This is yeah. out of this oh, this oh. And I don't know. This, this out of studio. No, I don't know. Like, after after the show, we can gist, but there's no more time. Okay. Me, I'm for revolution, but I want to have a target. No, uh, I'm coming. No, no, don't worry. I wasn't saying that for the discussion. I wasn't saying that for discussion. I'm just airing my views. I feel, I feel your passion. I have to move on. <laughs> I shall call you after the show. I'll call you after the show.